everyone uh, today we are going to discuss about abdominal tuberculosis uh, you all must be knowing that tuberculosis is one of the biggest uh, disease in this era uh, many people you have heard with uh, positive tuberculosis but most of you have uh, listened about the pulmonary tuberculosis not just uh, not uh, abdominal or uh, meningeal or any other site of tuberculosis that is uh, that, that is in a less number but there are the patient who are having other than pulmonary tuberculosis and that is why we have to discuss about the one of uh, one of them that is abdominal tuberculosis being a surgical person or uh, being a, an mbbs student even you just not have to think about in pulmonary tuberculosis so that is why i am taking this topic today about abdominal tuberculosis so uh, here i have shown one picture there is a man with uh, different organs getting involved with the tuberculosis the possibility of organ which can have tuberculosis that are the lungs uh, it can be a uh, heart pericardium of it can be opposite a lung due to the same same side can be a tongue tonsil cns appendix intestine genitals adenexa anything anything of this liver spleen adrenal anything can get involved so uh as per the cdc 2006 uh, they have counted that how many percent of people having pulmonary and extra pulmonary tuberculosis so as i said many of us have heard about pulmonary tuberculosis most commonly so it is the highest in number 70% but there are patient who are having both the tuberculosis pulmonary as well as extra pulmonary extra pulmonary is 21% this is 70% so raised 9% of people having both the tuberculosis in extra pulmonary tuberculosis abdominal tuberculosis is on the number 6 there are other plural uh, genito urinary meningeal lymphatics any other uh, extra pulmonary site can involve here i have shown one picture uh, showing that cns from top to bottom if we go cns neck the scrofuloma can occur adrenal glands abdominal organs in abdomen we can consider bowel peritoneum and omentum with bowel it's mesentery and mesenteric lymph node and genito urinary system but we are not going to discuss about gus as it it will be discussed in separately in the gynecological uh, discussion in gynecological part so other than this pericardium and thorax bone and joint causing pots tb pots uh, disease and skin tuberculosis right so this was about extra pulmonary site but today we are specifically going to discuss about abdominal tuberculosis why because if patient's intestine bowel is involved or uh, any part of uh, abdominal organ is involved he has to suffer a lot and there there is a huge treatment or uh, many things he has to gone through if we diagnosis delay so he he uh, may went into the complications so to prevent it we must be all must be knowing about abdominal tuberculosis so uh, what is the causative organism of it what is the culprit doing uh, abdominal tuberculosis so as we all know mycobacterium tuberculosis the single name we must uh, we all must be knowing so that is the presently uh, culprit presently causative organism for uh, myco uh, abdominal tuberculosis which spreads through the hematogenous route from lungs so patients a uh, patient is having suppose one person is having a lung tb he will have infection through the lung vasculatures passing through the body going to the intestine and uh, invading it right another earlier it was uh, mycobacterium bovis in place of mycobacterium tuberculosis but now patients are uh, coming with the mt tuberculosis mtb uh, there is atypical mycobacteria as well which can spread directly to one organ to another organ so if patient is having uh, intestinal tuberculosis he might have an mesenteric lymph node tuberculosis direct transmission uh, if he is having a typical mycobacterial infection there can be a m avm which spreads through the lymphatics as we have seen in this figure patient is having infection in the neck neck node is infected he is having scrofuloma so this lymphatic will go down to the uh, abdominal lymphatics that is periaortic preaortic mesenteric lymph nodes then uh, below that inguinal lymph nodes everything can involve due to through the lymphatic uh, route that is m avm mycobacterium avm right so uh after this uh, we are knowing causative organism so how uh, in what part of abdominal what, what type of abdominal tuberculosis are there and how it involves uh, so what is the classification of uh, abdominal tuberculosis so it is as i have said that in this figure what uh, abdomen content is bowel 
intestine peritoneum omentum and lymph nodes that is of mesenteric lymph nodes and other and other organs so classification is same the types of tuberculosis abdominal tuberculosis is same that is bowel is intestine that is maximum 55 to 60% involvement then covering it is peritoneum 40% with intestine there is mesentery and mesenteric lymph nodes so it is 5% other organs like liver spleen kidney etc that comes under 1% another is anorecto sigmoidal part anorectum is also a, a part of a bowel only intestine only but as it is having an uh, anal region is externally visible so it is having an external features like fissure fistula mass or abscess in the gluteal region so we i have considered it or i have put it in the different category in different type of abdominal tuberculosis and there are other rare types also other than this intestine peritoneum mesentery and mesenteric lymph nodes so what are the other that is an omentum the uh, policemen of our abdomen other is esophagus stomach duodenum and jejunum which are rarely involved with the tuberculosis but it can involve and other than that is retroperitoneum if we are considering peritoneum we have to think about retroperitoneum also so this was about the type of abdominal tuberculosis in that as i said intestinal is most common 55 to 60% so there are sub types of intestinal tuberculosis other than this esophagus stomach duodenum most commonly which part of uh, bowel is involved so that is ileocecal junction that is most commonly involved and after that second most is ileal region ileocecal region has three can have three type of tuberculosis can be ulcerative hyperplastic or ulcero hyperplastic and there is ileal region we will discuss all these things in depth in later slides in peritoneal patient can come with the acute or chronic presentation so uh, what is chronic presentation acute i'll discuss and chronic also in chronic patient can have chronic ascites or collected encysted ascites or fibrosis adhesion between the bowel or any pus collection that will be gradual like ascites won't develop in a night only it will develop gradually and when patient is having maximum distension or pain at that time patients are coming adhesion also same it won't develop in a night only so same is a pus collection so this was about acute and chronic peritoneal uh, type sub types that can be also a mesenteric involvement and its lymph node involvement you all know that uh, tuberculosis have caseating necrosis it can have hyperplastic necrosis or hyperplastic changes in uh, lymph node or cells or it can get calcified so it can be subtype you can have think of subtype like caseating hyperplastic or calcified uh, in other organs uh, there can be a miliary tuberculosis or diffuse tuberculosis miliary most commonly seen that is why i have mentioned miliary over here and as anorectal in other types i have discussed i have said it is same right so this was about the type of abdominal tuberculosis at what site it is occurring and what part it involves according to that there is a type of abdominal tuberculosis so after types how it is spreading so how this mycobacterium tuberculosis have reached up to this uh, intestine or ileocecal region or wherever so what is the type of uh, how it has spread so uh, so discussing about spread of infection it can be in uh, go through the five routes there are five routes so which are the most common is ingestion through ingestion right so through ingestion how how it is primary how it is secondary if i am eating suppose if i am eating a food i am eating something which is contaminated with m tuberculosis so it will go directly to my stomach my intestine so i'll get direct infection so it this food can give me a primary infection the direct infection now so, uh, think if i am uh, having an uh, pulmonary tuberculosis i am having a sputum with uh, which is lodged with uh, m tuberculosis but i am not spitting it out but i am ingesting it i am uh, taking it in my stomach so at that time this sputum will bring its infection to my bowel to my intestine to my abdomen so it is secondary infection as i am having primary in my lungs already so from lungs i am going to my abdomen so it is secondary so by ingestion it can be a primary or it can be a secondary infection uh, other is hematogenous route as i have said before uh, this m tuberculosis goes from lung to the uh, lung to the abdominal organ viscera through the hematogenous route so that was second type 
another is neck lymph node as i have shown in previous slides there is some infection in neck and it is going through the lymphatics to the mesenteric lymph node or periaortic preaortic any lymph nodes in the body so that is the third route mesenteric route through the lymphatics uh, sorry lymphatic a lymph node through the lymphatics another is retrograde infection can occur so what is retrograde infection so till now we have think about that blood can bring the neck lymphatics can bring to the infection uh this uh, by ingestion from food from mouth to uh, abdominal viscera is coming but now this retrograde spread is through the uterus through the vagina through this part if i am having a uterine infection right this uterine foci will pass through the fallopian tube to my abdominal organ to my intestine to my lymph node or to my peritoneum anywhere if this tuberculous infection retrogradely spread retrogradely goes to the abdominal content not from anti grade from mouth it is not coming it is coming from downward so it is called as a retrograde infection retrograde spread from fallopian tube so there can be a retrograde spread right so that is the fourth route and fifth one is direct spread from adjacent organ as i said previously this can also directly spread to intestine this if this intestine is having tuberculosis it can spread to this part to a fallopian tube or it can goes to the lymph nodes also it can go to the peritoneum omentum or any surrounding structure so that is the direct spread right so this are the five route of spread so now we have uh, reached to we know the infective agent we know the what kind of or what type of infection can occur what viscera can uh, get infected and we also know the mode of spread how this infection is reaching to this particular organ so now we will discuss about the clinical presentation so what uh, with what complaint patient will come to us and at what time we will think about other than the pulmonary tuberculosis we will think about the abdominal tb right so there can be a three type of presentation it can be acute it can be acute on chronic and it can be a chronic so acute is sort of like when patient is coming with the obstruction sudden obstruction or uh, is coming with the complaint of uh, acute abdominal pain gross distension like in a situation like the perforation so acute is in perforation or ob obstruction like situation right this obstruction can also consider in acute on chronic as there is uh, in many cases with the hyperplastic ulceration in the tuberculosis or any in many cases there will be stricture prolonged stricture causing prolonged obstruct uh, constipation like symptoms and at later stage when the whole lumen is obstructed due to this growth the patient will have an acute presentation of obstruction or due to this obstruction patient might have perforation proximal to it right so this uh, in acute on chronic you can think about a uh, many patient with tuberculosis having stricture or any other complication leading to the acute presentation in chronic you all as we have already discussed ascites this purulent collection and cysted collection this uh, stricture formation in this patients are coming in each and every opd that i am having complain of constipation he can go uh, past the stool but at a long uh, at a prolonged time or with the difficulties or he might be having complain of uh, bleeding pr or blood mixed with the stool such sort of complaint he'll have why because of ulceration or uh, because of uh, any hyperplastic changes in the bowel such things will lead a chronic complication or fissure if patient is having a fissure due to this if he is having anorectosigmoid so these are the chronic patient which will have this sort of complaint so this we can classify patient into three uh, this three categories acute acute on chronic and the chronic one right so this was about the basic thing so what particular presentation patient will have in acute or in chronic what symptoms patient will come with so there can be a constitutional symptoms and atypical presentation this constitutional symptom can be present in any type of pulmonary or extra pulmonary tuberculosis so that is why it is known as constitutional symptom so it it will be present in 30% of it, this abdominal tuberculosis also so what are they that will be low grade fever as there is infection and you all know mycobacterium tuberculosis have a tendency to get give the fever to any patient and that is also night rising fever with chills at nights only but not in the day time patient will also have a malaise he'll have night sweats anemia as i said ulcer can cause bleeding and that will lead to anemia and weight loss due to structural formation patient's appetite will be decreased and patient will have weight loss 
so uh, these are the constitutional symptoms we all must be knowing and we all must have to remember this basic symptoms other than the symptoms there are atypical presentation which uh, leads us towards uh, abdominal tb what are they that is lower gi bleed as i said lower gi bleed from fissure fistula or from anorectal ulcer this bleed can come in the pass through the stool pass with the stool if it is in ileal region ulceration it will present as an malina right so lower gi bleed will be there fistula in no pid like pain if the uh, lower uh, abdomen is involved or genitals are involved patient might have a complaint of pain like a pid so pid like pain gastric disease symptoms in case of a gastric ulcer duodenal jejunal involvement patient will have dysphagia gi fistula can occur tuberculosis have tendency and perforation as i said before so these are the atypical symptoms which can make us think towards the abdominal tuberculosis if patient is having such complaint so this was about the basic uh, complaints basic symptoms now we will go to the particular tuberculosis particular type of tuberculosis as we discussed before the most common the involved is ileocecal region so we will discuss that first so ileocecal tb most common site of abdominal tuberculosis due to presence of pierced patches and stasis of fluminal content favored by the ileocecal valve this site is most commonly involved how you all know this bowel have a, has an immune system via this pierced patches which is present at ic junction this is ileum this is your appendix this is cecum right at this site the uh, this ileum have this pierced patches what they do if it is infected uh, if any organism is coming here they will take inside they'll kill it through the m cell immunity h cell immunity b cell t cell function everything this pierced patches are do and they'll kill this infection but this m tuberculosis have tendency to stay there alive and that is why and second thing how they can stay here more, for more time why because this ileocecal region has a valve like function unilateral valve like function so food or any stool can pass from ileum to cecum only it won't come back so for that and before that this ileum has to reabsorb the contents like bile like vitamins like many things like food water everything get reabsorb at this site so for reabsorption function this food will stay here in ileum for a long time so content will stay in the uh, ileal region and that is also for long time in compared to in jejunum or in duodenum or in cecum or any other site in compared to any other site food will stay here for a prolonged time so this two reasons will lead to mtb get stayed in this part more and lead cause the disease more right so this was the cause of ileocecal tb so what are the sub type of ileocecal tb as we said as i said earlier or uh, that can be ulcerative type or hyperplastic type or ulcero hyperplastic type right so what is ulcerative what is hyperplastic and what is mixed so first we will see the figure so in figure as you can see there are many transverse ulcers are present here 1 2 3 everywhere is trans in transverse line this is the transverse line folds are mucosal folds are going on and the ulcer are also in the line of folds transversely placed multiple ulcer are there in ileum is also here so there are multiple ulcer present in the transversely placed in the cecal wall right but there are no any uh, gross thickening of surrounding wall is here right you can see that there is no gross thickening of wall is here whereas in this picture you can't see the definitive ulcer but you can see there is a thickening of wall is present here look at the marking the red marking here there is a thickening of wall is present here so this is a hyperplastic for the healing for the immunity body will uh, there is an mtb infection here so body will fight against him so during fighting the fibrosis will occur to prevent the damage and that fibrosis will lead the hyperplastic change and this hyperplastic change will convert this wall into the thickened wall right so it will wall will get thickened over this place so what this two things are doing if patient is immunocompromised he won't be able to fight so his wall will get ulcerated 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 but his immunity is there low immunity but immunity is there so in later stage this ulcer will get fibrosed so stricture formation will also occur in this stage also 
So this patient and this patient, both the patient will have stricture in later stage and both the patient will have complaint of constipation also. But this patient won't have complaint of bleeding. This patient will have as this patient is having multiple ulcer is here. So this ulcer will cause oozing and bleeding. So malina bleeding in stool will be present here. Due to ulceration, this patient also will have a complaint of diarrhea, loss of appetite. Both the things will be there. Here patient will have loss of appetite is there. But why? Because of stricture formation. As he is not able to pass stool, his abdomen is full till late. That is why. Right. So this patient will have subacute obstruction for long time. Subacute obstruction like feature, not complete obstruction, but subacute obstruction like feature. And this patient will have a late, late stage obstruction, late stage when the ulcer will heal and get into the fibrosis. At that time, he'll have an obstruction. But till then, he'll have a diarrhea, blood in stool, loss of appetite, loss of weight, anemia like picture, right? This is difference between these two, right? What I'm saying, if you uh, hope you all are getting. Uh, so now we will go to the this base after this basic thing, we will jump to the table. So be, uh, main thing, ulcerative type is seen in 60% of patient while hyperplastic is seen in 10% of patient. Why? Because we all know who have low immunity will get more infection, right? So this ulcerative type is secondary pul uh, to the pulmonary tuberculosis. So this patient is already having very low immunity. Why? Because he is having already infection in lung and now his abdomen is also getting involved. So lung plus abdomen, he is having both tuberculosis. So he must be having very low immunity, poor body resistance will be there. Or he might be an old person, right? So this three point or he is having a very virulent organism. So this three point is easy to remember. Ulcerative is more common in poor body immune resistance or in old person with virulent organism. So it is low immune, immune person. So he's having both the tuberculosis. So from lung to abdomen, it has it must have gone. So whereas in hyperplastic, primary GIT tuberculosis occurs and could be bovine bacilli also. So primary GIT tuberculosis occurring. So he's not having pulmonary. So he's having he must be having a good immunity, good body resistance. So he must be a young individual and he must be having a less virulent organism getting infected, right? So after this, what a clinical picture patient is having. As I have shown the figure, patient have multiple transversely placed ulcer commonly in ileum and often in cecum. Whereas in this, chronic granulomatous lesions are present in ileocecal region, right? This patient will present with diarrhea, bleeding PR, loss of appetite and reduced weight. As I have already explained with the figure, patient will have diarrhea. I hope it is easy to remember now that patient will have diarrhea, bleeding PR, loss of appetite and reduced weight. Present of uh, this patient, hyperplastic patient will present as mass in RIF. You can see this is like a mass. This is thickening. So patient will have this is ileocecal region is present in RIF. So patient will present as a mass in RIF. So this patient present as a mass in RIF, right? What complication patient will have already discussed? This patient will have late stage obstruction, stricture, right? So stricture and intestinal obstruction, complication simple. And as already I have said subacute intestinal obstruction. Why already have a hyperplastic chain, narrowed lumen. So patient will have subacute obstruction, not acute, but subacute from earlier stage only. On chest X-ray, what will you expect? This patient is having secondary pulmonary TB from lung to abdomen. So he must be having any primary lesion into the lung. Whereas this patient won't have any lesion into the lung. So a chest X-ray will be clear in this patient. In this patient, patient will have a lesion in it. Now, a barium study, talking about the barium study, the key part of uh, diagnosis of tuberculosis of abdomen. In barium study, patient will have ileal stricture and hypermobility. In this patient will have, as patient is having fibrosis and such changes, this cecum will pulled up. It will be pulled up. So pulled up cecum and due to cecum will be pulled up. This angle will get obtuse. More than 90 degree angle will be there. This is not just, you can see if this is 90, then this should be like this, but it is not, it is more than 90 degree angle. So angle will get obtuse. So obtuse angle will be seen. So this was about basic two types of tuberculosis of ileocecal region. 
So what is the third type involving 30% of patient? That is ulcer or hyperplastic. So few patients will have both the features, ulcerative and hyperplastic. And the picture will be mixed type, right? So we are not discussing in depth. So now, after all this, as already we have discussed in table that what clinical picture patient will have. To, so to generalize, so be, before you go to the any diagnosis or any radiological investigation, you are not knowing that this is ulcerative or hyperplastic. But through the clinical feature, you can guess about it. That is it a hyperplastic or is it an ulcerative? So what are the clinical picture already discussed? In brief, we will go through. There are abdominal pain. Obviously, there is ulcer or there is a hyperplastic change or there is a constipation-like picture. Patient will have abdominal pain. It will be colicky in intestinal type. If lymph node or mesentery is involved, it will be dull in type, right? So it is dull in type. A common in 25 to 50 percent or uh, 25 to 50 year of age. The young age, hyperplastic, old age, ulcerative, or can be mixed, right? Equal in both sex. Patient uh, may present with anemia, loss of appetite, diarrhea, fever, already explained to everyone. Mass in RIF, in hyperplastic type. And this mass will be hard, nodular, non-mobile, non-tender. Important to remember, appendicular mass will also be hard and nodular, non-mobile, but it will be tender. This is the difference between the hyperplastic mass of tuberculosis and this your uh, appendicular mass, right? With impaired resonance, which mimics carcinoma cecum also. Carcinoma cecum will be similar to this, but patient will have other complaint, like with the weight loss and other thing, he might have any secondary or inguinal or uh, other lymph nodes involvement, palpable lymph nodes or family history or so. So in that we have to go for family history. Otherwise, cecal mass, carcinoma mass will be similar to it. Whereas appendicular mass will be different as we are discussing this uh, DDs because this is about the RIF region. So we have to think about DDs also. Patient will have subacute obstruction already discussed in hyperplastic. Iliocecal TB can cause intestinal obstruction in 20% of patient later or sooner. As already explained, in stricture, due to stricture, patient will have obstruction in later or sooner stage if we are not treating patient on time. Specifically, if not treating patient or treat not diagnosing or treating patient, then only patient will have this obstruction. So, what are the differential diagnosis from this? We are we have seen patient clinically. So now we'll our mind will think about 10 things. So, which 10 things are this with this tuberculosis? Fever, diet rising fever, uh, weight loss, loss of appetite, diarrhea, stool, etc., etc. Will think will make us think about uh, this uh, tuberculosis. But if patient is not having prim primary infection, we have to think about other infection also. Primary, if not uh, having a pulmonary TB, we have to think other thing also. So that is carcinoma cecum already discussed as due to mass in the RIF. We have to uh, go for detailed history for family history or so, or uh, lymph nodes, secondary lymph nodes, and secondary involvement. Amoebiasis. Why amoebiasis? Due to diarrhea. Amoebic patient also have diarrhea, loss of weight, fever, etc. Appendicular mass already discussed. That, that will be tender, that won't be tender, this won't be tender. Ectopic kidney. As mass in RAF, we have to think about it. Same as retroperitoneal tumor. Lymph node mass. Any lymph node mass can also get enlarged in the RAF. So we have to think about it. Sua sepsis also get collected into RAF region. But it will be soft swelling, soft fluctuant swelling. Whereas in this, there is no fluctuation. In TB mass, no fluctuation will be there. So that will be differentiating from SUA sepsis. And Crohn's disease, why? This is irritable, like patient will have like uh, irritable bowel syndrome, diarrhea, blood in stool constipation at times. So that, that is uh, suggesting of Crohn's disease. So these are the differential diagnosis we will have in our mind before going for the investigation. So uh, to give justification to our clinical judgment that it is in uh, tuberculosis, abdominal tuberculosis, we have to do some investigation. So what are the investigations? If we are not, uh, if patient is not having diagnosed or proven pulmonary tuberculosis, but if we are suspecting that patient might have a pulmonary TB plus abdominal TB. So we have to get chest X-ray done first. So in ulcerative type, patient will have any primary lesions. 
in hyperplastic uh, type patient might not have any lesions in chest uh, there other tests are we all know montox test elisa safa that is soluble antigen fluorescent antibody test serum igg test and esr we done get done this all tests are like card test or done in a uh, few hours to get diagnosis about the tuberculosis montox test is uh, not that sensitive why because any patient any person who has been treated with tuberculosis also can get he is not having active infection at present but he has he had that infection and now he is treated that person can also get positive montox test any medical person or any person who is a health worker can also get positive test as he is having a, a infection infection in their body but that is, that is not in active phase though he'll have, he'll get this montox test positive so it is not that sensitive or specific so we are using other tests like elisa safa serum igg esr is marker of an infection it will be raised in this case so there is no much importance about it but just to follow up esr use so what other investigations to justify this abdominal tuberculosis with this we just get that patient is having an tb with this we are just getting that patient is yes patient is having tb but where that we have to find we are guessing about abdomen so we will go for usg abdomen now usg abdomen tells us about the ascites fecal thickening and nodal stasis status and other organs so what are the features in usg so that there will be as we have discussed thickening of the bowel wall will be there hyperplastic type or in uh, stricture also wall get thickened mesentery omentum and peritoneum can also get thickened if bowel wall involved bowel wall but if mesentery omentum or peritoneum is involved they will also get get uh, thickened due to nodule formation due to fibrosis due to adhesions they all will get in process of healing they all will get thickened in later stage there can be a loculated ascites with fine septas in between or there can be a gross ascites there can be interloop ascites with alternate ecogenic and eco free area that will give club sandwich appearance like this is the bowel sorry this is the bowel intestine is going this loop is passing through it here somewhere there is a here fluid is connected this this is the fluid this part this dots are fluid there is a fibrated septa between this bowel adhering this bowel together here again this is a fluid this is adhering bowel to bowel loop adherent adhesions this will give like a club sandwich appearance right this is seen on the usg right another is bowel loop radiates from the mesenteric root gives the stellate sign like this um, from mesentery the bowel loop is due to fibrosis and adhesion it will give like a stellate sign it will give appearance like a stellate sign seen on the usg you all should have the practice to go to the usg room also and see such features what you are reading you have to go to the usg room and you have to see with the patient that is this feature is present in this patient or not not all patient will have all the features present at a time but in different different patients you can see the different different features so you have to have that habit of going to the usg room or radiological department and see such things which you are learning at this time right so moving on to the next thing a uh, patient will have mesenteric thickness will be more than 15 mm if mesenteric is involved it will thick it will be thickened as written in the first line only but how much more than 15 mm right patient might have an hepatosplenomegaly lymph nodal enlargement also which can be a matted calcified or caseating pulled up cecum as i have said already pulled up cecum can present in hyperplastic type but if it is pulled up into the subhepatic region it will give the pseudo kidney sign we will, we will be able to palpate or we will be able to see in the higher area higher part from that kidney you can see the another kidney like the structure but that is not a kidney but it is the pulled up cecum in this area that is why it is called a pseudo kidney sign so this things you if you will see you will uh, get to know or you will uh, be able to easily remember such things rather than mugging up so once you understand just go with the patient accompany the patient to the radiological department and see it with your own eyes right and other is concentric uniform mural thickening will also be seen so everything will get thickened up right or it will get moved up right so and that will make a different different signs that is all you have to remember in this 
so after usg what you will do in usg you are guessing that in usg also that your diagnosis is coming nearer that this is abdominal tb only so what other thing you will get to do what other thing you will do that is x ray now x ray which x ray cxr is done now we are thinking about abdominal tb so we will get first plain x ray abdomen done so why plain x ray abdomen so patient can come into any stage as we already discussed acute acute on chronic or chronic in chronic patient this plain x ray abdomen is not that much needed in acute or acute on chronic patient needs this x ray why as i said intestinal obstruction and perforation this two main things can make patient to come acutely with the acute presentation so to rule out the, those two things a multiple air fluid level will be seen on intestinal obstruction case and there will be gas under diaphragm in perforation case so for this two things we are getting plain x ray done immediately when patient comes right we and we are suspecting about abdominal tuberculosis this things due to secondary to the abdominal tuberculosis what other thing we can see on the x ray abdomen that is calcification that can be in bowel lymph node or liver like any other organ right this three things we can see so now patient is not acute patient is chronic right and we are suspecting about this abdominal tuberculosis only right or patient is sort of acute on chronic but manageable so at that time what we will do is barium study we all know barium study nowadays is one of the most important uh, investigating factor investigation uh, done in this patients to of tuberculosis so, so what features we will be able to see on the barium study now so in this picture at first of all you won't be able to uh, see anything you won't be able to appreciate anything so i have put the one other picture this is ileum this is ileum this this is cecum and this is your transverse colon so you must be thinking why the cecum is so up why because answer you all know cecum get pulled up in hyperplastic type or due to secondary strictures in abdominal tuberculosis right so why ileum is like that there is a string like structure in ileum in the distal part now this is there is a bumpy structure in ileum again string there again bumpy so what is it as there is a stricture or hyperplastic changes the lumen of ileum has got narrowed down due to it has got narrowed down its efficacy of passing stool ahead will be decreased so what will occur this normal part of ileum will contain more stool it will be loaded more so it will get dilated so distal part of distal loop or pro, sorry proximal loop of ileum will be dilated whereas distal loop will be like a string a thinned out why thinned out it will be its wall will be get uh, thickened up but it its uh, lumen will be narrowed down so you will be able to appreciate the lumen through the barium study not the walls so what you are seeing is the lumen the thinned out lumen so there are two signs from this picture which are the signs one is the fissure sign and another is a string sign here you can see the distal ileum is like a string seen like a string so if there is a thin layer of uh, just thin strip of barium barium is seen in this uh, ileum distal ileum so it is called as a string sign with this with this uh, string sign with this barium thinned out barium layer if the ileocecal valve is not visible properly and cecum is also get thinned out like a conical shape it has become so that is known as a fissure sign in fissure sign what other thing is that there will be hurrying up of uh, another uh, hurrying up of contrast will be seen so it also known as a sterlin sign uh, this if there is a hurrying of uh, this uh, enema barium enema you can say that fast this uh, barium is moving fast from this area why it is inflamed it is uh, infected or it is narrowed down so it won't stay longer over here so at that time that is known as a sterlin sign rapid emptying of disease segment so this three things this three signs you can study from this small picture so now we will see the each x ray and we will read it out so this is the first one this is the first one uh in that i have shown this pulled up cecum here there is wide proximal ileum as we have seen in picture this is wide proximal ileum this is narrowed down 
terminal ileum this is narrowed down terminal ileum thin strip you can see you can appreciate right and after that this conical shaped cecum you can see this is conical like conical this is right this is conical shaped cecum but it is not in rif how you can say that this uh, as has a pubic bone is seen here but the cecum is over here somewhere in rhc so it it must be pulled up so this is pulled up cecum with the distal part of ileum dilated narrowing of terminal ileum and conical cecum so this was about pulled up cecum what other sign this is sterling sign in sterling sign what you appreciate is there is a conical uh, cecum again conical cecum as i said previously this is conical cecum with widely open ileocecal valve ileocecal valve will get opened up so because of that this ileum will get emptied fatafat fast it will get uh, emptied fast so rapid emptying of disease segment will occur so simply rapid emptying of disease segment is known as a sterling sign i am not saying sterling a string sign sorry i am not saying string this is sterling's rapid emptying of dye rapid empty of this barium enema in a disease segment this is known as sterling's sign right what that re uh, represent as it is emptying disease side it will represent acute inflammation superimposed on the chronically involved segment of ileum right so that was about this two now third is flisher sign what is a flisher sign as i have already mentioned thickened thickening of in this flisher sign there will be thickening of ileocecal valve right lips and wide uh, wide gaping of valve due to narrowing of the term and narrowing of the terminal ileum already we have discussed terminal ileum will be narrowed down it will be conical the cecum will be like conical like umbrella inverted umbrella you can see appreciate this uh, shape of inverted umbrella so cecum is look like a similarly inverted like an inverted umbrella so that is why flisher sign is also known as an inverted umbrella sign right what is the difference between string sign string not stalin this string and flisher sign just narrowing of terminal ileum is known as string sign whereas with narrowing this inverted umbrella like cecum is present with wide gaping between the valve ileocecal valve thickened ileocecal valve is known as a flisher sign flisher sign right hope you all are getting another is gooseneck deformity the fourth sign you can say fifth sign you can say of uh, ileocecal tb what is this is the goose you can see appreciate in this picture i have marked with hello ma'am your voice is not coming
हेलो मैम हेलो यस मैम यस मेक मी को होस्ट आई एम नॉट एबल टू शेयर यस मैम now visible 
हेलो यस मैम इट्स यस मैम इट्स यस विजय यस विजय ओके सो स्टार्टिंग अगेन विद द गुजनेक डिफॉर्मिटी हेलो यस हेलो ओके यस मैम सो स्टार्टिंग अगेन विद द गुजनेक डिफॉर्मिटी सॉरी फॉर द लॉस्ट कनेक्शन सो व्हाट इज गुजनेक यू कैन सी हियर दिस इज द गूज ही इज हैविंग थिनड आउट नेक विद अ ह्यूज बॉडी बिहाइंड सो सेम सिमिलर थिंग इज हियर प्रोक्सिमल डायलेटेड इलियम इज देयर which is lying just below the conical cecum thinned out cecum with the lost iliocecal angle and distinctly thinned out narrowed down of uh, your ilium so loss of normal iliocecal angle will be there dilated terminal ilium appears like dilated terminal ilium is appears like hanging from the retracted shortened cecum it will hang from retracted shortened cecum right so that is a goose neck deformity so this was all about the barium uh, uh, signs of the abdominal tuberculosis on the barium study which is it is having a 75% of efficacy so to quickly revise and in brief we will revise all the signs we have discussed till now of on the barium study that is the pulled up cecum conical like cecum there will be pulled down hepatic flexure or obtuse iliocecal angle that is the increased iliocecal angle the lens sign which is the hurrying of barium due to rapid flow or lack of barium in inflamed segment there will be narrow narrow ilium with a thickened iliocecal valve showing the inverted umbrella or fischner sign already shown which is conical like cecum with a thinned out uh, distal ilium which show like uh, uh, inverted umbrella ulcers or strictures in the terminal ilium showing the napkin lesions which already shown you on the dissected part of ilium in the initial slides only on ulcerative and hyperplastic other early sign is chicken intestine due to increased transit time and hypersegmentation and flocculation of barium inside uh, i have not shown picture of it here other signs are a uh, string sign already said that the thinned out or narrow stream of uh, barium in the ilium is known as string sign and another is goose neck deformity already already lastly discussed that multiple strictures with enormous dilatation of proximal ilium uh, mega ilium straining of the iliocecal junction with the goose neck deformity that is the narrowed down cecum and dilated distal pro proximal ilium hanging from this cecum is known as goose neck deformity so what other investigations are needed that are uh, colonoscopic uh, another is colonoscopy why as already discussed in the di uh, differential diagnosis you all know mass in rif we are uh, thinking about carcinoma of cecum also so now you will think we have done barium study so why colonoscopy is needed on barium st uh, study you can think of uh, narrowing down of stream or pulled up cecum this, uh, this uh, signs can be present in the ca cecum also so to rule out the con and confirm the diagnosis we have to go through the either biopsy or uh, colonoscopy in colonoscopy what will be the differentiating feature there will be uh, mucosal nodules and ulcer cecal and ileal structure will be there and deformed iliocecal valve will be there there will be mucosal edema and pseudo polyps and occasionally diffuse colitis will be also be present in case of abdominal tuberculosis whereas in uh, mass in uh, mass in cecum in carcinoma if you are suspecting carcinoma there will be cauliflower like mass or uh, surrounding mass will be there right so that will be differentiating feature but it is a differentiating feature but how to confirm it that is a mass only mass of uh, carcinoma only or this is the tuberculosis only so we are taking biopsy from this uh, colonoscopy and uh, sending it to the tissue culture and pcr for the confirmation of the diagnosis so from colonoscopy we are taking biopsy and with biopsy we are sending it for the tissue culture and pcr polymerase chain reaction of tuberculosis another uh, is uh, if the colonoscopy is difficult to do then we can do the uh, capsule endoscopy uh, it is also useful for the small intestine tuberculosis uh, fnse of the palpable mass if the mass is very much palpable in rif easily palpable in rif and easily accessible then we can take, take direct fnse also without colonoscopy we can send it for the uh, uh, investigation laparoscopy is also very useful method of investigation uh why so uh, because through the laparoscopy we can uh, take a look uh, over the abdomen 
we can see the other sign additions fibrosis nodules of tuberculosis and we can also take a biopsy and if there is an acytic fluid we can take all that also for the acytic fluid analysis so another is trans abdominal peritoneoscopy it is also uh, used for the visualization of the peritoneal cavity similar as in laparoscopy uh, through the uh, this is using endoscope through the small incision over the abdomen in this we are putting two to three ports in here one camera one instrumental port in here we are putting a single incision and we do trans abdominal peritoneoscopy through the endoscope uh this things laparoscope endoscope uh, aids in visualization to collect acidic fluid for the analysis already said and to take biopsy already said right so biopsy can taken from omentum peritoneum nodes and suspected areas and from anywhere any site we think about tb we can take biopsy and send it for the tissue culture and psr right so this was about uh, colonoscopy and laparoscopy and biopsy so what other investigation if you are not uh, ready to do uh, colonoscopy or sorry uh, laparoscopy what other investigation you can do is we can think about as ct scan ct scan abdomen so on uh, usg we are done barium study we are done you are not done with the colonoscopy or biopsy but you have to take mass there is no palpable mass but you have to we want to take biopsy or you want to get on to di diagnosis get on to the diagnosis so you will do ct scan in that case so what ct scan will say it is very useful and reliable investigation for abdominal tuberculosis it is done with the oral contrast ct enterocolysis it is known as uh, findings will be like as you have seen in usg bowel will be thickened if peritoneum or mesentery involved it will also be thickened out so thickening is most common thing occurs in everything ileocecal valve thickening will also be there ileocecal junction is as involved enlarged necros mated mesenteric nodes will be seen in cold and cold abscess we can be seen already said lymph nodes can be enlarged necrosed and mated right and, uh, and after that it can create in cold abscess too right there can be an additions secondary to the uh, collection mesenteric thickening and nodules will be seen already said thickening of uh, bowel wall peritoneum mesentery anything get, get get thickened out on us it was mesenteric thickening was 15 mm in this there is not specified nodules in the peritoneum and solid organs are uh, will be present like on the liver spleen pancreas anywhere the nodules can be appreciated additions in the bowel structures dilatation of the bowel features of the obstruction can also be appreciated loculated ascites can also be appreciated and ct guided fnac biopsy and aspiration of fluid can also be done the final aim is take fnac biopsy or aspirate the fluid inside which uh, can have the mtb organism so that we can do through the ct also ct guided also we can do it so this was about the ct scan findings so you can appreciate there is a loculated collection over here this is the dark color collection over here this is loculated collection of tuberculosis on this section you can appreciate here this is loculated collection in this you can see multiple calcification over the, here this is aorta this is i uh, intravena cava this is multiple collection in pancreas most probably this is pancreatic tissue right so pancreatic tuberculosis can be there this is a cytic fluid inside you can take biopsy from this and this side so another investigation other than all this ct this uh, barium study or colonoscopy fnac biopsy what other study you can do is after taking in uh, biopsy or any fluid or uh, uh, you can uh, take also stool also other than fluid and material biopsy material you can send the stool for the uh, afb culture but it is not that uh, specific for the diagnosis as presence of tb bacteria in stool does not signify the disease as uh, sometimes the dead bacteria also uh, can be present on this stool and that doesn't signifies or that doesn't signifies an active disease as i said that montox on the montox test similar it is for the stool culture afb also other is blind percutaneous needle peritoneal biopsy can also be done using copes and the abram needle uh, when there is a gross ascites or uh, when there is a gross mass you can take a direct biopsy right uh, another is anti code factor antibody when you are suspecting or when you are confused between the crohn's disease 
as on colonoscopy crohn's and tb uh, ileocecal junction will be looks like very similar on its clinical features are very similar like patient is uh, having a ulceration or stricture or hyperplastic changes patient is having diarrhea blood in stool malina etc etc which will be similar pictures of uh, crohn's too when there is no other uh, findings you have then you can send an anti code factor antibody also from which you can differentiate mtb from crohn's disease what other biochemical assay will help you to get diagnosis of tuberculosis that are proteins ada that is adenosine deaminase activity and interleukins these three things can also help this biochemical factor can also uh, help to get diagnosis of m tuberculosis uh, among which the ada is the most specific and sensitive marker with 95 to 98% sensitivity and specificity uh, if the ada is more than 33 international unit per liter in aseptic fluid which is collected from uh, uh, collected through any way in during the investigation through the laparoscopy or through the direct aspiration or it is more than 42 international unit per liter in serum that is significant for m tuberculosis so if the values are um, uh, above this in aseptic or in serum fluid you can give patient a diagnosis of m tuberculosis another is gamma interleukin that is also most helpful uh, uh, one of the investigation for the diagnosis of mtb but it is very costlier so it is not useful in day to day life right so this was about investigation other is you all know that we are doing staining to find the alpha uh, afb acid fast bacilli to find out the acid fast bacilli and uh, we are also doing a culture sensitivity culture media on growth we are growing this uh, organism on culture media so what are the other methods on which uh, we can uh, grow this biopsy taken specimen and we can isolate this mtb so that are the zidin uh, zilen nelson stain lowenstein jensen uh, culture media bactech mgit broth culture and cobas techman pcr this four things helps us to find out mtb from the taken biopsy or taken aseptic fluid or anything which we have collected any specimen we have collected from the suspected patient we can find out mtb tuberculosis uh, i am not going into the depth of the sensitivity and specificity Uh, the most sensitive is this cobas techman pcr pcr is always you all know if pcr is coming it is most uh, sensitive specific only as you all know another this is the growth media the, here we have mentioned the time uh, by the zidin stain in 1 to 2 hours we can diagnose patient is having tb or not but sensitivity specificity are less uh, by lg media we can find out mtb in 4 to 8 weeks specificity sensitivity more but other than doing lg media we can go for pcr directly as it is taking more time than this uh, zidin stain but it is more accurate due to its sensitivity specificity and in between if uh, we have specimen of uh, uh, we can go for bactech mgit broth culture also which gives result in 2 to 6 week and sensitivity specificity near to this tech pcr but to get early diagnosis nowadays we are doing pcr only right what are the so this was about investigation now you are confirmed that it is mtb but if uh, you are not able to diagnose or if you are missing the diagnosis or patient is coming late so what will be the complication before treating patient uh, patient if patient has came in the late stage or if you are missing the diagnosis what complication can occur in this mtb tuberculosis patient why the treatment right time treatment is important in this patient so to understand the importance of the right time right treatment uh, the complication we should be knowing so that are the obstruction at first you all know as i have already explained again and again how obstruction occurs hemorrhage also you know that ulcer can cause ulcer or anything can cause hemorrhage malabsorption also known as ileocecal region is most important part ileum is most important part and it is infected and it is not functioning now so malabsorption can occur blind loop syndrome similar way there can be a dissemination of tuberculosis to the other areas in the abdomen and cause an extra abdominal side tuberculosis also direct infection there can be an cold abscess uh, formation also it can uh, cause fecal fistula also uh, the segment can cause direct uh, abdominal fecal fistula also if uh, ileum is badly necrosed and badly infected it can cause fecal fistula and there can be a perforation also present in a later stage grossly enlarged ileum can lead to the perforation at this uh, Uh, part of transition right 
perforation can occur at any site in such patient but it is very rare complication so you have to remember logic there is a just logic behind everything uh, you will think about the logic what uh, tb can uh, cause to the abdomen cause to the particular viscera you can write the uh, write the complication diagnosis types ex, uh, its investigation anything with the logic only right so this was about the complication now we will jump to the treatment uh, treatment part so first of all before starting any treatment i have not mentioned here but this is most important thing to counsel the patient that he is having a tuberculosis you have to make patient understand the importance of uh, taking treatment and not being in defaulter not skipping the treatment what is the importance of it and when to come back to the doctor everything is important to make patient understand as uh, you have seen in pulmonary tb also many patients are not taking in few months they are taking and after that they are uh, not taking medication due to that they becomes a defaulter and the uh, uh, drug resistance will occur and further complications are seen similar way in abdominal tb also Say, uh, same thing if patient is beca becoming a drug defaulter or even if they are taking at times even if patient are taking regular treatment they are going into the uh, post treatment complication like adhesions and fibrosis and obstruction in later stage also so first of all first important thing is counseling of patient about the tuberculosis and its treatment right so first counsel the patient so after that you have to uh start the treatment what is the first is uh, you have to start the uh, anti tubercular medication that are you all know hrze inh rifampicin pyrazinamide and ethambutol first line drug we have to give to the patient in drug resistant cases we are giving second line drug like amikamycin etc uh who recommends 6 to 9 months course but as there are more complications seen in abdominal tuberculosis specifically a country like us a developing in developing country we need to give this drugs more than 9 uh, months that is of 1 year we have to give uh, there are recurrent abdominal tuberculosis has got high mortality and difficulty to manage that is why we are focusing on the prolonged treatment like of 1 year drug medication of anti tubercular drugs uh we have to give not just to give the anti tubercular drug but we also have to give supportive treatment like in tpn blood transfusion in pre operative as well as post operative period if patient is requiring surgery and if patient is not requiring surgery we have to under make patient uh, make patient understand about the proper diet high protein diet uh, as this patient must be a malnourished or low immune in low immune status other than the 10% of young individual who is having good immunity they are also having somewhat low immunity than uh, normal people that is why they are getting this infection that is why we have this immunity to be boost in immunity proper supportive therapy is also Im uh, important often we have to give steroids in many patient to prevent an adhesions specifically we have to think about adhesion in case of abdominal tuberculosis being a surgeon we have to think about adhesion as once patient is getting an adhesion he will be uh, go into the obstruction and have to go through the laparotomy or any laparoscopic surgical procedure to prevent that we are uh, giving steroids in a few patients also uh, with the anti tuberculosis drugs so when to uh, think about the surgery in this patient uh so drug therapy we all have given but when to think about the surgery what are the indication for the surgery in such patients so if patient has came with the intestinal obstruction there is a severe hemorrhage or acute abdominal presentation like perforation or any intra abdominal abscess formation or the fistula formation or if there is an uh, if there is an uncertain diagnosis in such cases we have to go for the operative intervention so what are the operative intervention you can think about that is also a logical thing uh, first of all first and most common we are doing is limited ileocecal uh, resection that is with a 5 cm margin is the surgical therapy for choice for ileocecal tuberculosis in most of the patient we are cutting this 5 cm segment of ileum 5 cm segment of uh, cecum from the diseased part right and we are doing ileocecal anastomosis that is the most common treatment we are doing or in case where there is a gross peritonitis with this we are taking this uh, part of uh, uh, ileum outside and we uh, make an ileostomy at that time if there is a gross peritonitis or perforation is there and there is a dirty wound inside in that case only we are doing ileostomy and in later stage in second stage we are doing ileocecal an uh, ileo colon anastomosis in later stage right so this may be done in initial period depending on the obstruction obstructive or another presentation 
or often during therapeutic period healing with the fibrosis causes stricture and obstruction in 3 to 6 weeks after the drug therapy patient during this time needs a limited ileocecal resection so many patient during drug therapy they are having fibrosis and stricture of this part so stool cannot pass at all at that time and to relieve this obstruction we do this ileocecal resection and do ileocecal uh, sorry ileocolon anastomosis at that time in such patient as there is no any peritonitis nothing else is there we can go for this ileocolon anastomosis ileo ascending anastomosis also at the same time right so other than this ileocecal resection what else we can think about so to relieve the stricture you don't uh, if a patient is not willing to cut the ilio iliocecal region or if the iliocecal region is wholly not involved there is just a single stricture or there are multiple stricture but at distinct place right so what you will do you won't cut the whole ilium and cecum at that time you will do just a stricture or plasty in such patient but if bowel wall is in edematous or friable with the single stricture you have to go with resection and anastomosis so what is the resection and anastomosis again this iliocecal resection with the 5 cm margin we are doing iliocecal resection in here in this also in the stricture case also but when indication i have brought edematous edematous and friable wall is there then in then only otherwise we are doing stricturoplasty in multiple stricture stricture resection of ilium and anastomosis is done that is an ideal procedure there are if there are multiple this is cecum this is ilium right multiple stricture here 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 so you will resect the part with the 5 cm margin no matter what how long part you have to cut and you do the anastomosis ilio ascending or ilio transverse anastomosis you are doing right but if the multiple strictures are uh, placed in the long segment like here in ilium there is one stricture but after 20 cm of segment in ascending colon or in uh, just uh, in cecum somewhere there is a single again a single again one one stricture is there then you can think of multiple stricture or plasty also but only when the multiple stricture with a long segment gap is there then and then only right so strictures resection and ilial anastomosis is done at first in multiple stricture and another option is multiple stricturoplasty so resection is always better option for the stricture within 10 cm of iliocecal wall uh, as if you are doing stricturoplasty there are chances of another uh, constraints of constraining or decrease or narrowing of a lumen so that is a better to do ra in if there is a uh, stricture within 10 cm of iliocecal wall right this was about ilial stricture operative intervention so now if there is not a stricture but patient is having a perforation of ileal bowel what will you do resection and anastomosis is an ideal procedure in perforation of ileal bowel in case of abdominal tuberculosis biopsy from perforation site and closure can also be done the this is resection is ideal method but biopsy after taking in biopsy perforation site can be closed primarily in few patient but there are chances of leak and fecal fistula formation and that is why we are preferring to do ra than closing perforation primarily in patient of abdominal tuberculosis uh, in severely contaminated peritoneum resection and exteriorization is done already said if there is a perforation and there is a gross peritonitis if there is a dirty wound in simple wound word if there is a dirty wound we have to do stoma we are not doing ra we are doing resection and stoma rs we are doing we are not doing ra in such case right so bowel continuity is maintained after proper antitubercular chemotherapy and proper nutritional impo- improvement this is second stage uh, treatment if we are doing exteriorization or stoma formation right this was about the perforation in and uh, tb iliocecal tb now another thing we can do or uh, we used to do in uh, previous days was ilio transverse colon anastomosis the bypass surgery we used to do but nowadays it is not used in daily basis it is just used in patient presenting with an acute intestinal obstruction with an poor general condition then and then only we are trying for ilio transverse colon anastomosis and in the high risk patient for a life saving procedure for life saving only we are doing this otherwise we are not doing ilio transverse colon anastomosis in this day a definitive second stage right hemicolectomy is also needed in this patient in a later stage that is why we are doing just for the life saving procedure not doing it in a day to day practice 
adhesive obstructions may be present in few patient as i said there can be adhesions interbowel adhesions for that adhesolysis is done and for adhesolysis laparoscopic adhesolysis is a better option than open adhesolysis so that is why i mentioned laparoscopic adhesolysis here uh, drainage of intra abdominal abscess and perineal abscess and treatment of tuberculous fistula in no can also be done at uh, as in when required if it is present we can do fistulectomy and drainage of abscess uh, we do wash of cavity we, we are doing without drain without putting drain we are uh, closing the abdomen this such things we are doing in a day to day practice right this was about the surgical treatment of ileocecal tuberculosis so briefly we can think that simply a lesion is an ileocecal lesion we will resect the ileocecal part with a 5 cm margin and we will anastomose ileum with the ascending colon that is ileo ascending anastomosis if there is an stricture we can do stricturoplasty or resection and anastomosis similar way multiple stricture multiple stricturoplasty but ideal is the ileocecal resection and anastomosis right if perforation can close primarily with taking biopsy but it can cause fecal fistula and chances of leak are there so ideal is resection and anastomosis but if there is a gross peritonitis we have to do resection and stoma the exteriorization of bowel and in second stage we can close it we can do anastomosis another is ileo transverse colon anastomosis that, that is for life saving procedure only in that patient we need right hemicolectomy in later stage another is the laparoscopic adhesolysis or open adhesolysis in patient with obstruction with just uh, with adhesions and that we are not needing to do any other procedure than the adhesolysis and sos drainage of intra abdominal abscess perineal abscess and treatment of fistula in no or fissure right this was about the treatment uh now jumping on to the second uh, second most common tuberculosis that is ileal tuberculosis that is very similar to this ileo tuber uh, ileo cecal tuberculosis that is why i have described it in very brief that is usually present with the stricture as ileum is very narrow so little bit of thickening of ileal wall will lead to the stricture maybe multiple right ileal tuberculosis can be multiple at multiple site as ileum is long uh, lo uh, long in the length it present usually in the with the intestinal obstruction obviously a stricture is there a stricture is there it will present with intestinal obstruction most commonly bowel adhesions localization fibrosis secondary infections are quite common at times right perforation in 5% of patients uh, though it is rare it is the uh, uh, culminities of peritonitis peritonitis you all know that if there is perforation it will uh, remove the content into the abdominal cavity and lead to the peritonitis plain x ray abdomen will show air fluid level if obstruction uh, gas under diaphragm if perforation right and uh, uh, barium study you have already seen string sign and stalin sign and etc that is on the uh, barium study on uh, usg and ct also same thickening of bowel loop will be seen interbowel coll uh, collection can be present and steatocystis will be present or can be club sandwich appearance will be there this was about the investigation and on treatment resection and anastomosis is done and continue anti tuberculous treatment and if there is a single stricture or multiple stricture we can think of stricturoplasty or uh, single or multiple stricturoplasty and sos resection and anastomosis this was about uh, ileal tuberculosis so in brief to go for ileal and ileocecal tuberculosis you can see in ileum strictures are more common long segment there is narrowing there is there can be ulceration in cecum in ileocecal tb it can be hyperplastic like thickening of wall or it can be dent in the wall that is ulcerative type thickening incompetent ileocecal wall that will be the thickening of wall when broadening of wall will seen omentum can be rolled up due to involvement it can goes up and it will be shrink and thickened right this was about the ileocecal tuberculosis in brief now we have uh, discussed about ileal uh, the uh, intestinal tuberculosis the ileocecal most common and second is ileal now we are uh, going to the another types of tuberculosis that is peritoneum now after that we will discuss about the omental tuberculosis uh, mesenteric lymph node and after that we will discuss about the uh, solid organs so now peritoneal tuberculosis so you all know covering of an uh, intestine there is a peritoneum is there so the in peritoneum usually it is post primary so due to uh, abdominal tuberculosis or in the lung next next uh, due to that it occurs 
uh, more commonly uh, post primarily it is not secondary after that but it is post primary uh, it is becoming more common in this days peritoneal tuberculosis than the ileal one but though still the number of ileal is 55 to 60 and this is 40 it is coming nearer to the intestinal uh, the ileal intestinal tuberculosis activation of long standing latent foci can cause this peritoneal tuberculosis blood spread is more common in this and also can develop from the diseased mesenteric lymph node and intestinal uh, intestine and fallopian tubes that is secondary right that is due to secondary so what is the pathology behind the peritoneal tuberculosis there will be thickening is in everywhere if tuberculosis is occurring thickening will seen 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 so there will be enormous thickening of parietal peritoneum with multiple tiny yellowish tubercles will be there here you can see multiple tiny tuberculosis and adhesions these are the multiple tiny tuberculosis on the peritoneum with adhesions of the bowel inside this the fragile wall and with adhesions you can't appreciate but you can see the multiple tiny uh tubercles over there right and thickening of the peritoneum the peritoneum won't be seen like this it will be very thin shiny or uh, quite transparent like a structure but it will be thickened over here dense adhesion in the peritoneum and omentum with the contents inside as bowel looking like an abdominal cocoon uh it will be like big cake everything will be mixed up a single content you can see that is called as abdominal cocoon due to adhesions between the omentum peritoneum uh, and inter bowel it will make a single structure like appearance a single bagged cake like appearance it is known as an abdominal cocoon here you can not appreciate things differently that is abdominal cocoon uh in this picture you can't appreciate things differently that is an abdominal cocoon it may precipitate intestinal obstruction obviously as it is creating an inter bowel adhesions and inter bowel and mesenteric inter bowel and uh, peritoneal adhesions inter bowel and omental adhesions it can cause an obstruction or it can transmit an uh, infection to the ileal region or any part of bowel leading to the secondary stricture and obstruction so what are the types of peritoneal tb we have discussed about the ulcerative and hyperplastic and ulcero hyperplastic in intestine but what are the types of uh, peritoneal tb as we have discussed earlier it can be acute or it can be chronic so what is an acute type of peritoneal tuberculosis it is very rare it is an on table diagnosis only features of peritonitis will be there it is most commonly due to perforation or rupture of mesenteric tuberculous lymph node right uh, you won't be able to identify this lymph node is infected or any lymph node is infected and it get ruptured and it goes into uh, causing the secondary peritoneal tuberculosis so what is the treatment of this fluid is evacuated and collected for afb study and culture as there is an collection peritonitis omental biopsy is also taken resection and anastomosis of perforated segment what the segment is perforated if the bowel is perforated then resection and anastomosis if the lymph node is perforated we have to dissect the lymph node abdomen is closed in such cases we after draining the fluid abdomen is closed without the drain as we have to prevent the formation of fistula so we close the abdomen without the drain with the tension sutures to prevent the burst abdomen and we start the atd right anti tuberculous drug we will start this is the treatment of acute uh, peritoneal tuberculosis as we are taking patient for the direct ot it is on table diagnosis right so what is another chronic type of uh, tuberculous peritonitis what is coming inside the chronic type so it is pre present with the abdominal pain fever ascites loss of weight appetite abdominal mass dewy abdomen peritoneum is thickened with the multiple tuberculosis as uh, i have seen in your uh, previous slide thickened and with the multiple tuberculosis tubercles uh, omentum is also thickened fibrous and rolled up infection is usually from the mesenteric lymph nodes in in such cases it is usually from the mesenteric lymph nodes or ileocecal tuberculosis or from the fallopian tube and rarely from the blood bone lung now from lungs it is very rare that is why it is primary not secondary not coming from the lung laparoscopy is very useful in this type of uh, type 2 diagnosis as uh, uh, with the help of laparoscopy you can see the interbowel adhesions you can see where is the collection is placed you can drain the collection you can uh, and you can operate even so laparoscopy is very useful in such uh, in this type of uh, diagnosis there are sub type of chronic type of tuberculous peritonitis what are the sub type it can be an ascitic form it can be a loculated collection 
known as encysted ascites encysted collection right another is fibrous form there is no collection but it is creating a fibrous septa in between it is creating an adhesion obstruction and another is there is an ascitic like fluid but it is infected with the pus collection there is purulent form so there are four subtypes ascitic loculated collection encysted type fibrotic type and purulent type so what is ascitic type it is insidious in onset it is a fatigue weight loss and fever anorexia will be there there will be abdominal pain but it will it will be very rarely seen as ascites is not causing anything if it is not infected it won't have a gross pain but there will be gross distension right but without pedal edema that you have to remember there won't be any pedal edema but there will be abdominal distension there won't be any gross abdominal pain right rolled up omentum is common in association with this mass right and how we will treat we will aspirate the ascitic fluid and we will send for the diagnosis and we will start anti tuberculous medication in the ascitic form what is a uh, loculated type so loculated itself says there is somewhere loculated collection not everywhere not like an ascites gross uh, gross collection won't be there right so loculated abdominal swelling ascites which is not shifting here you can uh, have shifting dullness here you won't have any shifting dullness diagnosis usg guided appearance uh, aspiration we can do in such patient we can send it for the pcr for uh, uh, afb culture for anything and we can start anti tuberculous drugs in such patient uh, in fibrosis type as i already name suggest fibrosis matlab adhesions fibrous uh, 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 transformation that is widespread adhesion of the bowel adhesions in matting and dilatation of bowel can occur secondarily act as a, a blind loop malabsorption obviously as adhesions are there it is not functioning it, uh, it is creating a secondary pyelolytic ileus like picture and it is uh, creating a malabsorption uh, secondarily this patient will have an abdominal pain right this patient wasn't having that gross abdominal pain this patient wasn't having a gross abdominal pain right this patient will have an abdominal pain due to constipation or stretching and right patient will have loss of abdomen due to loss of appetite thickened parietal peritoneum will be there diarrhea often mass in abdomen are usual features will be there whereas in purulent form due to tuberculous uh, sulfingitis it occurs most commonly presenting as a lower abdominal pain why due to tuberculous sulfingitis it is coming retrogradely so it will have in lower abdominal uh, collection it will have lower abdominal pain pain abdominal will be here it will be gross in this case fibrous type here it will be lower abdominal not gross specific part in lower abdomen umbilical fistula can occur abdominal wall abscess can occur in such patient in that case uh, surrounding the umbilical region the pain will be there so localized pain will be there cold abscess adherent to the abdominal wall can burst open at time right and this patient have a poor prognosis most commonly we start anti tuberculous drug and uh, we uh, drain the spirulent collection at times and send it for the investigation so this was about the peritonitis four type ascitic loculated fibrous and purulent picture are similarly here i have shown few pictures this is hyperplastic fibrous adhesion uh, this is uh, between anterior abdominal wall and the bowel there is a fibrous septa you can appreciate if you can uh, this is the hyperplastic fibrous adhesion this is ascitic fluid collection here this is fluid collection it can be localized or gross this is laparoscopic view right so this was about the peritoneal tuberculosis which was 40% clean mold now we are moving to the third common that is mesenteric or lymph node uh, mesenteric lymphadenitis which was 5% of all abdominal tuberculosis uh, here you can see there is line of mesentery here is uh, mesenteric lymph node tuberculous mesenteric lymphadenitis occur in this side so infection is usually through the pierced patches of intestine that is through the oral cavity so uh, i have ingested this mtb bacteria in my food it has gone to the pierced patches but now pierced patches is not involved my intestine it is not involved my uh, ileum but it has involved surrounding lymph nodes so now my lymph node is having tuberculosis so it is known as tuberculous mesenteric lymphadenitis right getting me so usually several lymph nodes are involved often causing a massive lymph node enlargement so not just single but surrounding all lymph nodes are involved and they are getting matted with each other they are getting connected with each other and making a mass like structure the large structure the huge lymph node enlargement they cause massive lymph node enlargement they cause right 
this is more commonly seen on the right side that is why is in the line of mesentery it is on the right side more commonly than the left side left side occurs but it is very uh, less chances on right side it is more chances to occur it presents with the general symptoms like fever malaise this constitutional symptoms are seen more commonly in such patient right as we have discussed 30% patient have this constitutional symptoms are more common in this patients pain in the umbilical region in right iliac fossa mass in the right iliac fossa which is mated and non mobile right obviously line of mesentery is there so pain will be in the umbilical region rif there will be a large huge enlargement of lymph nodes so there will be mass like structure in this rif which will be mated and non mobile and it will it can be a tender mass right uh, so in uh, continuing with the tb mesenteric lymphadenitis it may be present with a feature of acute appendicitis obviously as it is in rif mass right uh, often calls of ingestion uh, uh, intestine sorry calls of intestine get adhered to the caseated mesenteric lymph node causing intestinal obstruction obviously it is in rif this is the mass of lymph node this is cecum this is ileum it get adhere with this part and it will cause thickening and hyperplastic changes of this wall of ileum and cecum and cause secondary intestinal obstruction or it can cause directly weight lifted obstruction this is ileocecal junction if lymph node is here it will press the ileocecal junction uh, due to enlargement and due to pressing of uh, outside press or outside weight of uh, this lymph node it cause secondary intestinal obstruction so uh, it was about it most often caseating material may collect between the layers of the mesentery and forms in cold abscess so this is uh, your intestine right this is your mesentery this is your mesenteric content here these are the folds of mesentery uh, i cannot show you here but there it is like a curtain type of uh, fold uh, if one second to show you like this is the mask if this is the mesentery it is like a curtain like this way these are the folds of mesentery this is bowel here but there are folds not uh, you if you will just take out the bowel it will be like spreaded like this but if you are putting it the bowel inside the wall inside the abdomen it will be again like this it will have a curtain like picture so between this folds between this two folds here this one fold and this two fold here somewhere this collection will be lymph node collection will be collected and that will form a cold abscess and which will mimic like a, a mesenteric abscess or pseudo mesenteric cyst it will mimic like a cyst right so this is about pseudo mesenteric cyst so massive enlargement of mesenteric lymph nodes due to tuberculosis called as a taps mesenterica if uh, this massive enlargement occurs it is known as taps mesenterica mesenteric tuberculosis adenitis is more common in children uh seen uh, children coming with the uh, pain in rif we have to suspect appendicitis with that we have to suspect about this mesenteric tuberculosis if he is having complaint of night rising fever weight loss and loss of appetite and uh, failure to thrive in children's pain what is failure to thrive that is not gaining weight not uh, gaining all the milestone right so this was a picture this is the picture of mesenteric lymphadenitis this is mesentery as i have shown you as i have shown you one second as i have shown you you can see the curtain like structure if you can appreciate here this are i am marking it this vessels are there and there are the, this are the forming the curtain like structure these things are forming the curtain like structure and as this lymph nodes and large nodes this nodule get uh, infected and at one point of time if they get burst and they uh, create an collection over there so that they will form a picture of encysted uh, mesenteric lymph node uh, collection cold abscess right and it will give the false picture of uh, mesenteric cyst this is the ct scan picture which is giving inter bowel loop uh, fluid uh, caseating material collection this is the bowel loop and this black part is uh, collection this is the interbowel loop collection you can appreciate right this is about the mesenteric lymphadenitis so what is the differential diagnosis as mass in rif so carcinoma cecum can be lymphoma retroperitoneal tumor and non specific lymphadenitis right this can be the dd rif mass is there only appendicular lymphadenitis can also be suspected right i have not mentioned but appendicular mass can also be concluded in this 
Acute non-specific mesenteric lymphadenitis is known as nurse syndrome. There is no TB, but acute mesenteric lymphadenitis. It is known as nurse syndrome, right? It is non-specific nurse nurse syndrome. So another is now uh, after getting this investigation and DD uh, sorry after uh, going from this clinical picture, its type and the common features. we have to think about the investigation to rule out this differential diagnosis so what are the investigation we get the x ray abdomen and that what we will get the calcification we will get by because in mesentery you are seeing the multiple nodules can be caseated can be calcified can be hyperplastic so on x ray you can see this calcified nodules and in many of patient on x ray abdomen on usg you can confirm the diagnosis montuk test can be uh, will be positive as patient is having tuberculosis Diagnostic laparoscopy is very useful in such patient. As I said, in peritoneal tuberculosis, in this mesenteric tuberculosis, this mesenteric lymphadenitis can lead to the secondary peritoneal tuberculosis due to burst of this lymph node. So, diagnostic laparoscopy is important and very useful in this patient. Mesenteric cold abscess can be drained safely through this laparoscopy. You can drain this mesenteric cold abscess through the laparoscopy easily. That is why diagnostic laparoscopy is important. You are diagnosing and you are uh, doing investigation also. You can. Uh, and you you can use it as therapeutic due to drainage of this uh, abscess cold abscess so what is the treatment so anti tubercular drug you have to uh, give to each and every patient as a rule with that laparoscopy as it is helpful as diagnostic diagnostic as well as the uh, therapeutic so laparoscopic surgery is important and proceeding if uh, perforation or whatever next uh, is there we have to proceed further after laparoscopy a uh, prognosis is good in such patients with the tuberculous uh, mesenteric lymphadenitis so this was about the tuberculous lymph uh, lymph uh, mesenteric lymphadenitis we have discussed till now about intestinal tuberculosis in that ileocecal tuberculosis ileal tuberculosis and then another thing we have uh, uh, we have discussed is about the peritone uh, peritoneal tuberculosis and after this peritoneal tuberculosis what we have discussed is mesenteric lymphadenitis Uh, which was five percent common. Now the rare, rare thing, the anorectosigmoid part, the omental peritoneal, sorry, the omental part and the liver spleen-like organ, we will discuss in very brief, right? So we will go on to the another part now. So that is anorectosigmoid part. What will come under the anorectosigmoid part is? How huh, this is the. picture i have shown here about the anorectal sigmoid uh, uh, tuberculosis it mimics the carcinoma of rectum why because there will be multiple ulcer over the uh, rectal region there can be hyperplastic changes also there there will be uh, multi, uh, there can be a picture of tenesmus diarrhea discharge in uh, blood in stool so carcinoma rectum patient can have diarrhea uh, discharge and tenesmus like picture in blood in stool also so at first we, uh, we can think of the ca rectum uh, as a differential diagnosis so what other thing can be present so discharge from the fistula and occasionally mass per abdomen can also be seen in such patient due to collection in lif now uh, rectal tuberculosis occurs usually within 10 cm of anal verge it will be within 10 cm of anal verge not beyond that uh, more common part fistula are painful obviously any fistula will be painful characteristically it is not indurated in this case right tuberculous fistula are commonly multiple uh, in normal patient it will be single but in tuberculous fistula you can see there will be multiple openings will be present tuberculous anal ulcer will be shallow bluish with a undermined edge you can see here it is very shallow it is not deep it is shallow right under edges are this edge you can see it is undermined is going undermined you can see here you can go it is undermined right edges are undermined and this is quite bluish hue right it is bluish undermined edges and shallow ulcers are there so yeah, this was the picture of you can have ulcer multiple ulcer anal ulcer rectal ulcer give it mimics like ca rectum uh, there are uh, diarrhea discharge from fistula will be there fistula will be painful in patient but it won't be indurated this will be the picture of anorectal tuberculosis there can be a collection there can be a fissure multiple fissures in anal region with the collection with the pus discharge with the pus discharge can be gluteal abscess also in many patient 
uh, surrounding this fissure, there can be a gluteal abscess, secondary gluteal abscess also. So what investigation we will do? As we are suspecting rectal carcinoma, we have to do sigmoidoscopy in this patient. We can do USG, per rectal USG as well as abdominal USG. Both we can do. Uh, we have to send this discharge for the uh, study, any discharge from the study. Fistulectomy and biopsy confirms the diagnosis. If there is a fistula, we have to do fistulectomy and we have to send a sample for the histopathological investigation, for the uh, further investigation. We have to give ATD to this patient, that is anti-tuberculous drug. We have to do fistulectomy as a diagnostic and therapeutic treatment. Uh, often sigmoid resection is also needed. Uh, if there are multiple ulcer, uh, non-healing ulcer, uh, and doing secondary fibrosis, and further complication or there is a secondary perforation, we have to go for sigmoid resection also in such patient. So this was about anorectosigmoid tuberculosis. Now we will go for the omental tuberculosis. Here you can see this is the policeman of our abdomen. This policeman is gone to one side now as it, it has got fibrosed, it has got illed. So the ill policeman is resting at one place now, right? So as always, it has got thickened. It occurs usually as a part of other types of tuberculosis. If peritoneum is involved, it will involve uh, this omentum. If the bowel is involved, it will involve the omentum. So it is a part of other type of abdominal tuberculosis. Rolled up omentum with thickening is characteristic picture. This is rolled up with thickened, right? Our policeman is on the side now. He's resting as he's ill. Often cold abscess can develop and per se in the omentum only. In omentum only, the cold abscess can occur. Right? It is of, uh, if it is so, it can be dealt with the laparoscopy safely under the cover of ATD. Uh, in all abdominal tuberculosis, drug treatment is given for the one year, especially in our developing country. Right? That you have to remember. Not in all country, but in developing country. So this is brief about this uh, omental tuberculosis. Not going into the depth. We are covering now three important solid organs uh, before ending up the session. So what is the, uh, if uh, tuberculosis is involving liver, it can be miliary, it can be diffuse, it can cause the granuloma formation, tuberculoma formation. Here the liver, uh, the specimen, cut picture of the specimen of the TB uh, liver. Uh, it, uh, like a liver abscess, intrahepatic calcification can also occur. Obstructive jaundice, obviously, if liver is involved, it can cause jaundice. But uh, if there is an obstructive picture, that will cause obstructive jaundice in such patient. Uh, pyrexia of unknown origin and altered LFT will be there. Treatment will be same. ATD and drainage of abscess uh, and further investigation is important. Same, same way, in a spleen, it can be a disseminated or miliary TB. This is the picture of a spleen having multiple nodules over here, like a miliary TB of a spleen. This you can appreciate, if you can appreciate, can present as a pyrexia of unknown origin with the hepatosplenomegaly, can occur as a multiple abscess, and treatment is ATD, SOS splenectomy, if it is burst and involved whole spleen, uh, drainage of abscess is also required at times. And further investigation is done with the specimen and biopsy taken. Uh, another is tuberculosis of pancreas. In one CT, I have shown you the calcified, uh, no, uh, calcified calcification over the pancreatic region. Like or a part of miliary tuberculosis, it involves pancreas. Common in immunocompromised patients, usually present as an acute or chronic pancreatitis. So with the patient of pancreatitis, you have to think about tuberculosis also. You don't have to think about alcohol and other etiology. You have to think about this also, right? Pancreatic mass or abscess may be developed. Uh, can mimic the malignancy and treatment is again ATD and further management in pancreatic tuberculosis. So this was about the different type of uh, abdominal tuberculosis. You have seen, you have clinically seen the patient, you have investigated the patient, you have given the treatment to the patient. So now what is important part is coming is the after just you have done surgery and you are uh, done with the patient is not enough for the abdominal tuberculosis. The, in, the, in this case, in the abdominal tuberculosis, in any tuberculosis, follow-up is most important thing because patients have to take prolonged treatment, not just one day OT and five days follow-up is needed. He has to take treatment for a six months to nine months to one year. So you have to take a regular follow-up these patients to prevent the further complications, to prevent post-operative complications, to prevent patient from becoming a drug defaulter and going into the another uh, uh, complications. So what is the follow-up uh, important? You have to check regular weight of the patient. If patient is getting weight, he is gaining weight or not. 
that is important indicator and simplest indicator in the tuberculosis patient if he is getting treated if he is feeling better he'll eat more his appetite will be increased so improved appetite will improve the weight there will be reduction of the abdominal pain and distension in such patient there will be absence of fever bowel habits will be normal he'll go he won't have uh, further com uh, complain of constipation now uh, there will be improvement in anemia so as ulcers are healing in patients uh, so he won't have any loss of blood in such patients so hemoglobin will also improve in such patients uh, esr will getting normal as infection is getting reduced usg abdomen will also improve sonological features patients who are not responding in 6 week who is not improving on such uh, factors in within 6 week of uh, anti tuberculosis drug should reassess again uh, for the drug resistance so that is why this is uh, this are the this points are important if you are if any point is lacking within 6 uh, weeks of treatment you have to think about drug resistance and you have to change drug accordingly so associated and uh, you have to change drug accordingly and you have to also think about associated diseases also like a malignancy carcinoma lymphoma or uh, crohn's disease or eosinophilic enteritis uh, during therapy as i have already said in ileocecal resection part many patient during drug therapy get intestinal obstruction due to fibrosis or structure of a healing stage and they need surgical intervention so you have uh, the follow up of patient is important on only medication on patient who are only on conservative management and as uh, it is important in both on conservative and operative but on conservative this point also you have to keep in mind so uh, points to be remember after this all these things we have discussed is who now recommends anti tuberculosis drug for 6 month in general uh, for all tuberculosis patient for uncomplicated four drugs for two months and four drugs for four months and complicated four drugs for two months and two drugs for seven, seven months but uh, many patient needs one year treatment especially as i have always said in my session in developing country like us in developing country like us we have to give one year treatment as there are com more complication because of complication because of complication and difficulty in managing recurrent abdominal tuberculosis one year treatment is important it is commonly given in developing countries right uh, what is the first line drugs you have to remember that also already i have mentioned that isoniazide dipamphenicin ethambutol and pyrazinamide but you should know the dose of it isoniazide is 5 rifampicin is 10 you have to add 5 5 for initial 3 and after 10 so 5 10 15 25 so for isoniazide rifampicin ethambutol and pyrazinamide second line drugs are amikamycin uh, there is kenamycin uh, paraaminosulfuric uh, acid ciprofloxacin and ofloxacin and another is clarithromycin azithromycin and rifampicin right Uh, so this is about the first line and second line drug and we have to remember that we have to give one year of treatment to all our patient as we are de in developing country and there is more complications are seen in uh, surrounding us so this was the point to remember now uh, to end up this session i'll give a take home message that uh, repeated surgeries in abdominal tuberculosis is difficult and uh, uh, it is dangerous as uh it is dangerous that it can cause the fecal fistula for the radiations and such complications are very common in such patients so timely diagnosis proper treatment and counseling of the patient is most most important counseling not just not just before the ot or before starting a treatment but counseling before treatment during operate after operative intervention and during follow up also from preventing patient from getting into the other further complications this is about all about the abdominal tuberculosis thank you all hope you all enjoyed the session and if uh, anybody of you have any uh, questions you can put into the youtube channel lecture uh, in the comment box and you can directly text uh, through the white army also thank you